Welcome to the Men of Iron Podcast, equipping men for growth in your faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. Check out menofiron.org to learn more about how you can get involved in or support the vision of changing a culture one man at a time. Thanks for listening. Here's your host, Chad Zook. Welcome to the Men of Iron Podcast. This is episode 72. And in this podcast episode, I talk about find your why or find your purpose. Of course, this is connected to episode 71, where I talked about there are five ways to fight discouragement and confusion. Find your why or find your wind, as I talked about in episode 71, is the first of the five ways that I talked about. Now, it is not imperative that you listen to episode 71. However, it would allow you to have more of a well-rounded understanding about where we're going. But in case you don't listen to episode 71, you can get a lot out of this just as it is. Well, hey, here at Men of Iron, we exist to change a culture one man at a time. And one of the things that we hear from time to time is men struggling to know why they're here. They, they get bogged down in life and maybe they just they struggle because they just put their head down and they just kind of plod along and plod along. And after a while, they lose sense of who they are and what it is that they're supposed to be doing and this grand adventure that God has for them. So we're going to we're gonna help you with this today, is to help you find your purpose, find your why, help you find your wind. Of course, this whole series was inspired by Seneca, a Roman Stoic philosopher, when he said, if a sailor doesn't know to what port he is sailing, no wind is favorable. My hope is that at the end of this podcast episode, in this series, that you would be able to answer some questions. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What is my unique contribution to the planet? I'm grateful that you were along for this one, gentlemen. It, it was great to, to do this study. I, myself, am inspired by it. Hopefully, you will be as well. If you're inspired, give us a, a positive rating and review on iTunes. That would help other men to be able to get this information just as you did. And also, another way that you can just say thank you is to share this with the men in your circle. We would so appreciate if you did that. But now, a word from our sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by Strong27. It's a proven guide to mentorship in faith, family, fitness, finances, and friendships. You can find that at www.menofiron.org slash programs. And what you will learn is... Uh, Strong 27 is a way for you to know God, know your purpose, and know each other. This would be a great follow-up, actually, to this podcast. Leaning into that, asking some questions. If you go online, you can actually uh, contact one of us at Men of Iron and sit down, and we can actually have a consult with you to see if this is the best pathway forward. Strong 27 is a mentorship guide, but we also have guides for groups. We also have uh, other retreat guides. We have all sorts of things that we, we could provide for you. Try Strong 27. I know that you'd be benefited by digging into it. Need a personal financial coach? Doug Kaufman can help with that. Whether it's a business or personal finance, Kaufmans have trained CPAs ready to help you. They're ready to help you to have financial clarity and peace of mind. They develop for you a step-by-step plan to make your financial goals a reality. And they don't just create the plan and then leave you hanging. Instead, what they do is they continue with you to track progress and to celebrate wins. And a win is determined by you, so you can have financial clarity and peace of mind. They work really hard at helping people to understand where their money's going and also for them to help uh, to have the finances to reach the goals that they want. So Doug Kaufman and his team can be found at KaufmanCPA.com, K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N-C-P-A.com. Doug and his team have been doing virtual coaching and doing virtual CPA work for quite a long time, since before COVID. This was actually part of their business strategy. They know how to do it. They know how to connect with you. I talked to Doug a couple weeks back And man, he knows his stuff. We shaped up a great conversation and I was really inspired and challenged by what he said. And I believe that Doug and his team are going to be able to help you to go to the next level so you can have clarity, financially speaking, and you can have peace of mind. If that's something that you need, go see Doug at KaufmanCPA.com. All right, gentlemen, so let's talk about find your wind, find your purpose, find your why. Let me give you a little analogy about sailing. 
You see, a sailor must know the direction of the wind so he can position his sail. The sail is positioned to utilize the wind for further motion. You can move forward as long as you know the direction of the wind. It seems intuitive that sailboats, you know, are obviously only powered by the wind, and they can easily travel with their wind at their backs. That makes it seem pretty obvious. However, uh, but it may seem impossible that they may turn around and come back home again, because if they're only going in the direction of the wind, it's like, what are they to do to come back? You see, but even this reverse movement is possible because a boat's sail is shaped like an airfoil, kind of like the wing of an airplane. On a sailboat, wind blowing across the boat at an angle inflates the sail, and it forms a similar foil shape, again, like an airplane, and it creates a difference in pressure that pushes the sail perpendicular to the wind direction. Now, I'm no expert on this, and I may have just said this and it went right past you. You'll understand this part. Windward sailing also does not work if a boat is pointed directly opposite the wind direction, according to the physics of sailing. Wind has to be moving across the boat at an angle of at least 40 degrees for most vessels. So if you angle too sharply into the wind, it causes the force of the boat to become unbalanced and moves the boat sideways instead of forward. A sailor intending to travel windward toward a point exactly in line with the direction of the wind will have to zigzag back and forth to reach its target. This is called tacking. And as they're traveling at an angle as close to the wind's direction as possible, the sailor then can reach the point uh, that they're directed where they're trying to go, irregardless of the direction of the wind. I said all that to say this. When sailing, they use the wind to propel them, but they often don't go there in a straight line at all. They zigzag back and forth depending upon what direction the wind is going. You don't sail in a straight line even if you have the wind at your back. Living with purpose is quite similar. You and I can plot a long-term goal, but the likelihood of reaching that goal in a straight line like we would want to is very unlikely. You and I will have to pivot back and forth using God's strength, God's wisdom, and our obedience to live out our purpose. In this podcast, I want to help you get unstuck and fight discouragement and confusion by finding your why, your purpose, and the wind that will motivate you. It will not be in a straight line. Oftentimes what God wants to do is he wants to move us in the way that we need to be moved to shape our character. But I want to encourage you with this. When a man has a solid purpose, he is naturally motivated. He has that wind in his sail and he can use the circumstances. He can use what's going on in his life to put him in the place where God wants him to be. You see, the the wind is God-given and personally experienced. Simon Sinek calls it your why. It's the thing that makes your heart come alive. It's the place where longings and dreams come true. The wind has been referred to as the flow by some in the secular world. And I want to think of it as, as just this almost a mystical way of living an unforced life where you're just being the person that you're supposed to be and on path because that's where God has you. The key to remember the, with all of this is to be patient, to be patient. God is not in a hurry. He does not want you to be in a hurry. You're going to do things on His time. So why do we get stuck in life? Sometimes we get stuck in life because we're trying to compare our life to somebody else's life. And by comparing us to them, we seem like maybe our life seems really small based off what we see in somebody else's life. We're looking at somebody's highlight reel. We're not looking at their day-to-day. We're not looking at the, the rhythms, what motivates them. We're just looking at what's happening from them and what we can see from a distance. And oftentimes, the, I think the reason why we get stuck is because we're too busy comparing ourselves to somebody else. The only person to compare yourself to is you have the best version of you. And the only way that you're going to get to the best version of you is if you submit you to God. And then God would elevate you to the place where he wants you to be uh, fully and complete. I think another reason why we get stuck in life is just we drift. It's kind of like a syndrome, the drift syndrome. When we can't figure out why we're doing what we're doing or, or how we ended up working the job that we're working, a sense of drift just settles in. It seems that instead of planning out a career, 
we've just drifted along the tides and eventually we just found ourselves here. Or perhaps we had a plan, but a lack of follow through and maybe just life has been hard and you've, you've had some hard knocks and that's changed you and it's caused you just to drift along. Maybe you just got tired. Maybe you just, uh, you just struggled with that and you, you were operating at a pace that you knew that you couldn't uh, operate for very much longer, but yet you just kept going and now you're just drifting. The truth is most of us drifted to some extent into whatever it is that we're doing. Uh, we all tend to drift. None of us has, has mastered this. We all uh, have this kind of like a drift mentality, and oftentimes it's triggered by some emotional thing that's happened in our life. So uh, drift syndrome is one of the reasons why we get stuck in life. we too busy comparing. Sometimes we we're stuck in life is because we actually haven't followed through on the last bit of obedience that God wanted us to. So the reason why we're stuck is, is our own disobedience. Whether it's for fear or stubbornness, we're stuck, and we're the reason why. And the reason why we're stuck is because we haven't followed through on the last thing that God wanted us to do. Sometimes it's just false expectations that maybe we think that, you know, all of life is like all the bells and whistles. It's like the the, the grand finale at the 4th of July. It's everything's big and big and big. And you know what? Sometimes life's not big. Sometimes life is just changing the oil on your truck. Sometimes life is just mowing the grass. Sometimes it's just paying the bills. Sometimes it's just your nine to five. Sometimes your purpose is not glamorous. It's just living out what it is that you're supposed to do on that day. But it is work that you can be proud of. If you're working within your, within your purpose, it should be work that you can be proud of. And sometimes we just do things and we settle into, we have the false expectation that this is going to be some grand work. And yet sometimes it just turns out to be thankless work. And it just takes time and energy and we just have to just to bear with it. Purpose work is like planting a tree. And it takes time. It's hard work. But you may be creating something that somebody else is going to use for shade. Life can be monotonous. There's even purpose in that. Uh, another reason why we get stuck is we choose priorities over passion. There's the thing that just revs us up, but we're too busy doing other things that, that keeps us away from the thing that makes us come alive. So uh, sometimes we just have priorities that we've just set in place. So we're too busy for anything else. And our nine to five and all the other things that we tend to do, it just squashes the passion that we, that we know that we need to help us to engage deeply with our purpose. We want to go forward with our purpose. How can we know? What is it that we're supposed to do? How do we get unstuck? I have a few suggestions here, and they all begin with P. I'm not trying to be witty. It just turned out that way. So the first thing I would suggest is pause and pray. And I realize this sounds so churchy, but you know, this is a Christian men's podcast, so let's go there. Pause and pray. The way that you are going to be able to move forward, if you're un- if you are stuck in your life and you want to be unstuck, shouldn't the answer be go to the person who offers you purpose to begin with? So if you're stuck, discouraged, or confused, take some time to pray and meditate on the Scriptures. Again, God is not in a hurry. You should not be in a hurry. You see, when your mind is preoccupied, you will run on impulse, not on long-term goals. You won't run on on purpose, on what you're trying to achieve in your life and the the day-to-day responsibilities that add to that purpose. When your mind is preoccupied with other things, you will just run on impulse and you will miss it and you will not be living in the fulfillment of your purpose. So the way to move forward is to first pause and pray. Pause and pray. Uh, These impulses, they, they will come and go, but what happens is when these impulses then are met with God in prayer, and you've paused, and you've meditated on on Scripture, now you have a way of of regaining an understanding in your mind as to saying, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to go forward. Psalm 37, 4 says this, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. 
God wants you to understand who you are and why you are on earth. Purpose, purpose is not a mystery to be figured out. Purpose is a blessing to live with. I love what John Eldridge said. He said, A man's calling is written on his true heart, and he discovers it when he enters the frontier of his deep desires. You want to talk about purpose? You want to talk about, hey, pausing and praying after God will allow you to reset those impulses so you don't operate on, on autopilot anymore? Go into quotes like this one. This just opens your mind up to the purpose, what, ha- what God would have for you. Again, John Eldridge said this. He says, Every man needs a battle to fight, a beauty to rescue, and an adventure to live. That every man needs a battle to fight. This adds into the purpose of you as a man, married or single. This pertains to you and I. Every man needs a battle to fight. We need to know that there's a battle and that we are being equipped to fight in this battle. We need a beauty to rescue and and an adventure to live. This is what God has for us. This is the the purpose that he has for us. When we, we don't live on impulse and we stop living on autopilot, we pause and we pray, God aligns us with the desires of our heart we as we delight in god and then god opens up the frontier of our deep desires and he's going to show us the battle that needs to be fought the beauty that needs to be rescued and the adventure that we are to live but the first battle a man must fight is in finding his purpose is always the battle against himself it's the battle that man is is just because the sin that's in all of us, we all have a bent towards selfishness. So the first battle is is battling against our own selfishness. You see, a man's desire to make his outer world revolves around his inner world. A man's desire to make his outer world revolve around his inner world. So we need to battle and fight against selfishness, fight against apathy, understand that that there is a grand battle that God is inviting us into. We have, we, and there's a beauty to rescue. And maybe that beauty to rescue doesn't necessarily have to be a woman, but for most of us, it's going to be a woman and an adventure to live, an adventure to glorify God and to bring good into this world. Here's, here's a way of settling all of that I said so far. Purpose is found in service to God, others, or a righteous cause or a connection of all three. Purpose is found in service to God, others, or a righteous cause. I want to give you four ways that God leads his people. Oftentimes, we just kind of, we stop. Maybe we've paused and prayed, and we just stopped, and we're just kind of waiting for God to do everything for us. There's four ways that God leads his people. I borrowed these from John Piper. They all begin with D. Again, not trying to be witty. This is from John Piper. The first one is a decree. This is when God sovereignly leads us where he wants us to go. So he just puts us in a position of where he wants us to be, what it is that he wants us to do, and what he wants us to become, maybe in our workplace, in our calling, in our vocation, where God is sovereign and he just leads and directs us exactly where he wants us to be. I want you to know, men, that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Now, you may have gotten there in a sideways way. You may have gotten there not taking the straight line. You may have taken some detours along the way, but God has sovereignly led you to the place where you are. The next way is direction. This is the teachings and commands from the Bible. All of these provide directions for your life. The the conditions of your life vary, of course, so the application of these commands will also vary. The third one is discernment, and that's following God through situations that require greater sensitivity. You don't discern as an individual. You also need to learn how to discern with a group, with a band of brothers, with men who you have locked arms with, who you're doing life with, that you trust, your friends. So discernment is, sure, it's, you have to discern things individually, but, but you don't discern spiritual things all by yourself. You need to bring those to your band of brothers, help you to discern those situations where they need great discernment. 
because it requires greater sensitivity. You don't want to get it wrong. You want to have the voice of other people. You want to bring this into your mentorship. You want to bring this into your discipleship. You want to bring this into your, into your community group. You need to bring this into your band of brothers so you can discern and follow God through those situations that require greater sensitivity. And the last one, which is actually the least common, and that's just God telling us what it, what it is that He wants us to do, just telling us what to do. If I'm honest, this is what many men get stuck in because they just want God to just tell me what it is that you want me to do. And yet, what we're going to see next week is God wants more for us than just just moving us like pawns on the chessboard of life. God longs for connection and relationship with us. Sure, there's some things that He would like for us to do and He wants to do through us, and yet God wants a relationship. So He's not just going to move you like you're a pawn to manipulate you, but yet there are other times where, and it's less common, that God does declare. He just tells us exactly what it is that He wants us to do. But a lot of times we have to lean heavily into discernment direction and that decree more so than we do the declaration of just telling us exactly what it is that he wants us to do. The next P is passion. So the first thing was pause and pray. The next one is passion. There are three types of passion that I would would just kind of explore so you and I can understand better what our purpose is and maybe what our purpose is in in every aspect of our life. So the first uh, passion is a people passion. It's the in really a series of questions helps us to understand this. What group of people do you intuitively care about? So what group of people do you intuitively care about? There's just this group of people that you're just you're really sensitive about. You're they're the, you know they're they're people you you say you know what I, you just want to protect them and you want to provide for them or whatever the case may be what group of people do you intuitively care about another question who has god brought close to you maybe this is a girlfriend maybe this is a wife maybe this is your sister maybe this is your kids your brother your nieces nephews neighbors maybe this is your faith community who has god brought you close to there's there's passion there and there's also going to be purpose there. So also, another question connected to the first two, what group could I share my faith with? What group could I share my faith with? So who, out of, out of the, the people passion area, who is it that I could share my faith with? Another one is cause passion. So leaving the people passion, now we're into cause passion. These are the issues and causes that you naturally feel drawn to. I'll give you a little bit of my backstory. The reason why that you hear my voice on this podcast is because God's redemptive plan and redeeming brokenness in my life, in my childhood specifically. I had childhood trauma. I did not have a a strong male role model. My dad was there, but I didn't have a strong male role model in my life. I felt lost for most of my life. It was It was people who... Uh, then, after I gave my life to Christ at the age of 21, it was people who stepped in at a Promise Keepers Bible study, and and then also through some discovery, through some of John Eldridge's work and some others, that I started to understand that God had a plan that He that He wanted for me, and He had a grand purpose for my life. My hardship led me into the deeper purpose of my life. That was the the pathway that God had for me. While hardship can lead to purpose, most people probably find purpose through more meandering, through a combination of education, experience, and self-reflection. That's the pause and pray part, as God would reveal it. And, And this is often even helped along by the encouragement of others. So you you have your people passion, and there's some questions to help you understand that. Uh, again, we're trying to get to a, a purpose, a place of purpose, and there's purpose all over the map here. And then also the cause passion, the issues and causes that you naturally feel drawn to. For me, it's helping men to glorify God and bring good into the world. It's helping men in, in any way that I can and to reclaim masculinity in the way that God wants us to render out those masculine Forms. Some questions that go into the cause passion. Another one is, is this, what issue of injustice makes you want to run into battle? 
What issue of injustice makes you want to run into battle? There's going to be a cause passion there. What, what's one area of your life that you can make a difference today? What's one area of your life that you can make a difference today? So we have people passion, cause passion, and the last one is the influence passion. How can you best unleash your passion? This is your your influence. Who's around you? The cause. How can these two things meet? And who can you influence as just a way of rendering out the passion, the thing that God has for you? So we started with the pause and pray. We talked about passion, finding what it is that makes your heart come alive. This is the, the, the frontiers of your heart that elders would talk about. We also covered that every man needs a battle to fight, a beauty to rescue, and an adventure to live. So there's purpose all over that. And the first battle that a man fight is his own selfishness and his own apathy. So what is it that we're supposed to do next? We're supposed to practice. Genesis 2.15 says this, The Lord took the man and he put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The to work it, can be, can be also translated to serve it. You serve the work that's in front of you. This is part of your purpose. When you serve the work, you serve the Lord. This is your purpose. God assigned work for you to do. Serve the Lord in it. In that scripture, I find it, interesting because it says the Lord took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden. It could be also translated the garden of delight to work it and take care of it. And to guard it is is another way that that is talked about. Well, what would he need guarding from? Man. He would need guarding from man. What man can do to uh, creation, what man could do to other people, what man can do in creating worldly systems that, that oppose other people. You see, when you serve the work, you serve the Lord. And when you are ready to serve the Lord, you find out that the work that He has for you is a lot bigger than what you previously thought. And that goes back to the passions that we talked about, the people passion, the cause passion, influence passion. And then I, I want us to... to end this podcast with this verse and with one more idea. The verse comes from Colossians 3, 23 and 24, and it says this, Whatever you are doing, work at it with enthusiasm, as to the Lord, not for people, because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as the reward. Serve the Lord Christ. You see, whatever work man was given to do was out of service to God. That's what I want to end with today. Whatever work that man was given to do was out of service to God. This is your purpose. This Men of Iron podcast is brought to you by Men of Iron. If you're interested in getting involved in or supporting the vision of changing a culture one man at a time, or you simply want to know more about our Strong 27 mentorship experience, Equilibrium retreats, Anchored Man video series, or Men of Iron Plus, go to menofiron.org.